Twitter's long-awaited layoffs are now happening as we speak, and these layoffs are far bigger than anyone expected. Earlier information indicates that about 50% of the 8,000 employees have been fired by Musk. Furthermore, according to various reports, Twitter employees who don't like Musk are forming inner groups, and their plan is not great news for Musk. Moreover, Elon Musk's recent decision to lengthen work hours at the company has received many negative reactions from employees. This transition has also caused added stress for managers, some of whom have had to spend nights sleeping in Twitter's headquarters because of increased work that they now have. Additionally, because numerous top executives are leaving their positions, Musk has been changing things around. Plot twist, a new update at Twitter is asking the few employees who were not fired to operate from the offices rather than remotely. At San Francisco-based Twitter, Musk and his new team of advisors are still digging into a range of ideas for staff reductions and other policy changes. This is a very interesting situation, so let's explain it. A major Twitter investor has endorsed job cutbacks at the firm. Finance's chief executive and creator, Changpang Zhao, stated that a smaller staff would be more beneficial for the social media platform. The cryptocurrency exchange has invested $500 million in Twitter as part of Musk's $44 billion buyout, which was recently completed and has since been followed by a series of adjustments and proposed overhauls of the firm. According to the reports, on Friday, 50% of Twitter employees were fired, with impacted employees at the San Francisco-based corporation to be notified soon. Twitter employees have been working far longer hours than usual since Elon Musk came on board. This comes as employees face the prospect of layoffs as part of the internet mogul's planned restructuring of the firm. Twitter administrators have asked certain employees to work 12-hour shifts, 7 days a week, 84 hours a week, to fulfill Musk's targets, according to internal correspondence. Musk's $44 billion acquisition of the social networking platform was completed only recently, but fears about layoffs at the firm have been circulating for some time. It is unknown how many employees will be laid off and when, as well as which teams would be the most impacted. Employees have been assigned tasks, which some regard as a test by Musk's team to evaluate who works hard. It has been revealed that Musk's team handed some of the Twitter engineers weekend coding tasks known as sprints. Other responsibilities include making significant improvements to Twitter's verification process. It was reported earlier that an internal communication was issued to Twitter employees working on improvements to the company's authentication procedure, informing them that they will be expected to work around the clock to get it out. Meanwhile, Twitter's managers have been ordered to conduct performance assessments and submit Musk's team lists of which staff should be retained, according to sources familiar with the talks. However, the managers are feeling the pressure as well, with several claiming to have slept in Twitter's headquarters on Friday and Saturday nights. Twitter's senior executives were asked to meetings with Musk and his team at Twitter San Francisco headquarters, in which they were asked to discuss the work of their various departments, according to two sources engaged in the sessions. Some Twitter executives said they were being evaluated. According to a person familiar with meetings at Twitter HQ, Musk's team wants to lay off about a quarter of the company's employees in the initial round of layoffs. Musk dismissed Twitter's board of directors, thereby making him the company's sole director. Twitter has been in reform since Elon Musk bought the firm for $44 billion, and he and his goons, as some Twitter employees have termed them, seized charge. In the face of imminent layoffs, employees have been putting in long hours to finish new projects and design prospective app improvements. According to media sources, they've also been sharing the office with members of Musk's inner circle, including his attorney, Alex Spiro, tech entrepreneur Jason Calacanis, and venture capitalist David Sachs. According to two persons familiar with the revisions, the latter two have also been included in Twitter's official personnel directory. Amid the company's rising instability, current and former employees have started sending each other direct messages, with some labeling Musk's advisors Elon's goons. Meanwhile, many Twitter staff have stopped utilizing the company's internal channels to discuss workplace difficulties, and parts of Twitter's Slack channels are mostly silent, thanks to Musk's takeover. According to reports, Musk and his colleagues have been operating from a previously vacant floor at Twitter's San Francisco offices, where they had discussed potential ideas for the company's future. This includes a redesign of Twitter's authentication procedure, as well as a possible reboot of the video sharing service Vine. A person familiar with the matter said that Musk intended to fire people who did not assist him as the company's leader, instead of simply firing a certain proportion of the company's employees. Sarah Personette, a chief customer officer and ad boss who already expressed interest in working with Musk, quit recently, adding to advertisers' anxiety about how the social media firm will alter under its new ownership. Delana Brandt, the chief people and diversity officer, announced her resignation in a LinkedIn post. 
Nick Cordwell, the general manager for Core Technologies, disclosed his resignation on Twitter, altering his bio to former Twitter exec. According to sources, Twitter's chief marketing officer, Leslie Burland, its director of product, Jay Sullivan, and its vice president of global sales, Jean-Philippe Mayhew, have all gone. It was unclear if they resigned or were requested to leave. Elon Musk is rumored to be considering ending Twitter's work-from-anywhere arrangement and returning staff to the office. If true, the policy is identical to Tesla's compulsory work-from-office policy. According to a recent report, Twitter can make allowances and certain workers can work from home if required. According to reports citing people familiar with internal operations, Musk and his new team of advisors at San Francisco-based Twitter have been examining a variety of options for employee cutbacks and other policy changes. The report does not say when Musk plans to reverse the work-from-anywhere policy, but it might be in the coming weeks given that the new Twitter owner is already imposing various deadlines on Teams. Musk's automaker, Tesla, made it necessary for workers to work from home for 40 hours per week sometime in June. He purportedly stated in an email that employees should return to the main office rather than a remote branch. Surprisingly, Twitter's work-from-anywhere policy was maintained by Parag Agrawal, the former company's CEO who was sacked following the official takeover. The corporation will notify its employees through email if they have been laid off. Following a week of uncertainty about the company's future under new owner Elon Musk, it will also notify employees if it is temporarily shutting its headquarters and barring staff access. Twitter workers who are not impacted by the layoffs will be contacted via their work email accounts, according to the social media network. The statement said that employees who have been laid off will be contacted via personal email about their future actions. Musk's announcement of layoffs after a week of purges in which he sought major cost savings and enforced a rigorous new work culture across the social media platform. According to two employees, hundreds of individuals swarmed the company's Slack channels shortly after the email arrived in their inboxes. According to the sources, Musk was invited to join the channel. If you are in an office or on your way to an office, please return home, Twitter said in the email. According to two persons familiar with the subject and an internal Slack message, Musk has also asked Twitter teams to find up to $1 billion in annual infrastructure cost savings. That's it for today. Subscribe and hit the notification bell.